Guys, this week on Everything You Need to Know, we're going to talk about how to get your spouse into boating. I'm going to start this episode with a story, and there's a reason for the story. When my kid's mom and I broke up almost 10 years ago, I was in a really unique situation. We were together for 13 years, so any hopes and dreams that we had were of like buying houses and new cars and becoming functional grown-ups. We had gotten together so young. So I really had no dreams of my own when I found myself single after all that time. When I started my soul searching, as most men do after a breakup such as that, call it a midlife crisis because really that's what it is, I stumbled across sailing and, of course, the cruising life. Sell everything and sail the world. I already had a sailboat, of course. Uh, It wasn't the type of one that you would do that with. It was my first sailboat, a Chrysler 22. And even before, when her and I were together, she had never set foot on it. So the whole sailing dreams, cruising life, it just never even occurred to me until this point. When you start getting into this whole sailing and what can sailing do in my life and what sort of dreams can I have of sailing, you of course come across cruising, which is long-term sailing, living on a sailboat, that kind of thing. And the cruising bug bit me hard, really hard. I knew what I wanted to do and my 10-year goal started that day. In the next few years, of course, I spent pouring over YouTube videos like Delos and Uma and Atticus and I learned everything I could. I was a sponge. I absorbed everything for years and years. What kind of boat would I need? Where could I even go? Where do I want to go? What safety equipment do I need? Navigation. I researched everything. I absorbed everything for years. So at that point, I knew I wanted to go sailing, and I started to steer my life in that direction. But Weirdly, at the same time, I had just started dating again. And let me tell you how many first dates I ruined by explaining my plans. They all, people I dated, found it romantic as an idea. But it takes one heck of a unique lady to be interested in someone who is so passionate about selling everything they own and sailing off into the sunset. It's dangerous. It's scary. You're selling everything you own. Most women... At that age, I was 30 at the time, want stability and a future and, you know, build a house, build a family. And I'm over here on first dates at the restaurant going, that's not what I want. So, kind of sucked. Believe it or not, I even had a few second or third dates with a select few who didn't mind the idea. And one even found it to be awesome and was totally on board, so to speak. I apologize for the dad joke. Sadly, that relationship didn't work, but finding that special someone to live this life with certainly isn't easy. Now, I told you that story and hoping that you'll just be honest with prospective first mates. If boats are a big deal in your life, you need to make that clear on day one. I'm dating right now and I always bring it up and how big of a part of my life it is to any prospective first mate. And I also tend to bring up the YouTube channel too. You guys are such a huge part of my life. It's not always easy to date somebody that spends 20 hours a week developing YouTube videos um, or is somewhat open to the public like I tend to be. I spend hours too replying to comments and Facebook messages as well as having email, phone, and even video chats with patrons who have questions. This is likely a good time to insert that Lady K Sailing and Everything You Need to Know is brought to you by patrons, people who give a couple of bucks an episode to keep this channel improving. And being a patron gives you a lot of perks. When you want to chat, we can chat. I do try to reply to all my Facebook messages and YouTube comments, but this channel is a one-man show, um, so I'm doing my best. Okay, so let's say you're not dating. You've already found your someone, your person that you are married to or you're going to spend a lot of years with. So you won't be able to be as selective as to who you end up with in terms of your passion for boats. So here's some things that I think you and your potential first mate that you're already with could talk about to help ease their way into the boating world. So every relationship is obviously built heavily off communication. Talk to her about why boating is so important to you. If she really loves you, she's going to hear you out. 
and she's going to actually care about what you care about and she may actually want to be a part of it it's not going to take a lot of convincing to get her to listen and hear you out but don't scare her with big plans let's go sail around the world and sell everything that's a terrible way to start talk about how the boat might fit into your lives right now and then maybe a little bit about what might happen in the future what can you guys do with a boat right this minute how is it going to change things for you what value does it add to your lives together getting a boat doesn't have to be scary boating is of course very addictive and if she can ease her way into it with you you may be willing to jump head over heels straight into the boating world but let her ease her way into it and you might find that she might catch that passion too this whole thing is very addictive there are a few people in my dating past that actually own their own sailboats now that's how amazing boating is girl captains which is awesome this is important address her concerns she's worried about boat life and that might be weekend owning a boat or actually sailing away together into the sunset because of two or three things that bother her about it most likely hear her out and address those things take them seriously it's not your job to doubt her reality or try to dismiss it don't just tell her why you think that she's wrong she's not wrong this is her reality so listen to her maybe she thinks boating is dangerous you guys could research safety equipment together what can you outfit this boat with to ease her mind on its dangers maybe she doesn't like the idea of small spaces pick a boat together with a layout that she can get behind does she want it to have a good size head and shower or maybe an aft cabin for comfort the boat buying process should include her opinions as well as yours you can also watch videos together i watched delos to sort of get into this watch videos that outline what it is that you're interested in in the boating world she needs to see why it's so amazing and more importantly she needs to see that other spouses that maybe it wasn't their idea to do the boating thing have gotten on board with this thing and are actually enjoying this stuff there's a lot of fulfillment and happiness in boating find someone real who lives the life that she can get information from and not just the sunsets and the perfect days but the good and the bad somebody who will tell it straight so she can actually see both sides of the story this one's big and you're not going to like it never ever buy a boat and surprise her never buy a boat and surprise her but she needs to be involved in the research and the purchase process never even go see a boat without her make sure that her input is 50 percent of the decision it's her boat too ultimately turn boat shopping into a relationship building experience take her to a boat show i would personally suggest the annapolis boat show because i think it's the best one in the world and if COVID actually ends i will be there this october and i would absolutely love to meet you guys on the financial side don't dream too big you may want hundred and fifty thousand dollar yacht but start small that's going to break the relationship and the bank spend like 10 grand on a 25 to 30 foot weekender keep it cheap keep it easy so it doesn't overwhelm her or your joint bank account this is another important one don't make the boat a financial burden to either one of you in any relationship where you have a shared bank account it's normal for each person to have a hobby that costs money that's totally okay but your boating hobby is huge it's a huge amount of money she's likely fine with you financially if you spend a hundred dollars here and there in your model car building hobby but the five grand a year on slip fees and maintenance is a whole different story find a way to make the money on the side or some other way and not take anything away from your day-to-day -day life whether it's college tuition for the kids or retirement savings boating is truly a financial all-encompassing hobby and you need to understand that you need to make financial sacrifices to have this hobby financial sacrifices in other areas uh, if you want her to agree with you on the financial side you've got to give up spending in other places to make boating one of the only places you spend any disposable income you might have boating really is like that when i got serious about boating I was also building cars and motorcycles and taking the stuff I built to car shows. But when push came to shove, I had to give up those hobbies 
to really put financially everything I had into boating to make a serious run at it. It really is like that, but he's worth it. This is going to be hard for some people, but you need to hear it. Let her have a say. It, whether it's as simple as decor in the boat or is involved in which boat and which engine, women are extremely good at doing research and evaluating what fits their life best. Let her help. Now let's say you guys bought a boat. You're that far. How do you keep the damn thing? <sighs> Number one, man, don't be a dick captain. Uh, too many captains yell and scream and holler and get stressed out. Come up with a system for communication. And I know it seems silly, but when you're anchoring and she's up on the bow doing the anchor thing and you're at the helm, get the, they call them relationship savers. They're headsets so you can talk to each other without screaming. Um, seen a lot of couples use those. Huge relationship saver. That's why they call them those. Boating, however, sometimes is life or death. I want to say get along and be open and communicate and be soft and be smooth and be okay with each other in a communication level. But boating is one of those things that can be life or death. So you need to set the expectations with each other ahead of time. When the stuff hits the fan, and it will, and it comes down to it saving the boat or saving the lives or, or whatever it is, you both need to set aside the emotions and work as a team, of course. You won't have time to dress anything up or sugarcoat anything. And feelings can be hurt pretty quickly in those situations. That's normal. Uh, but if you go into it knowing that, and she goes into it knowing that, you can at least minimize some of the impact of it. And I promise you on a boat, you will have. You'll be docking, or you'll be anchoring, or, or a storm, or something like that. When push comes to shove, and it's life or death, or it's the cost of the boat, there has to be one clear captain. And whether that's you or her, I don't care. But there has to be one clear captain in charge. And things happen very, very fast. So... The captain, whoever that is, needs to be in charge of the boat, have the most experience and make the best decisions in a life-threatening situation. And the other person in the relationship has to just do what it is the captain says to do. And I hate to say that, it sounds sexist or something, I don't know, but that happens. I promise you it happens. You need a structure like that where one person's in charge. And if they screw up and the boat's lost, it's on them. But you can't be bickering, you can't have emotions, you can't have anything like that. In that life or death situation, you need who's in charge and who's listening. Don't care which way it is. Whichever one of you has more experience, that's who's in charge. And you'll save the boat that way. Just don't tarnish the relationship doing it. Make sure ahead of time you talk to each other about it and say, we end up in a storm or we end up trying to sink or whatever it is. Things might get a little aggressive or rash or not sugar-coated or whatever you want to call it. We both need to walk away from that afterwards being okay with it. Next up, when you guys do get a boat, make it fun. What does she like to do? What boating things would she like to do? What interests her about boating? Take the kids swimming, sunsets at anchor, sleep under the stars, make it romantic, have dinner in the cockpit, have midnight swims. There's so much romance in this thing that she is bound to fall in love with it if you show her that side of boating. This one is a very big deal and a lot of new people, actually I think all new people make this mistake, make good weather decisions. One day in bad weather can ruin boating for somebody forever. I promise you this. In the summer, I was dating somebody and I really wanted to show her the romance of sailing and spending the night under the stars. We're gonna anchor out and we're gonna have dinner on the barbecue and we're gonna have music and we'll have wine and. Uh, that kind of stuff. The plan was to go out sailing in the lake and then drop the hook and sleep in the lake. Sounds very wonderful. The wave height and wind direction, which I'm paying attention to always, promised for a slightly bumpy evening while we were trying to sleep. And while I may be okay with that, somebody new to boating who had never really been on a sailboat might hate it. And it could turn them off from boating forever. And if this is somebody I could possibly end up being with I don't want to turn them off from boating forever so instead we went out we sailed a little bit in the lake and then I took the boat up a protected river and we had our romantic evening up the river anchored under under the stars it's very much less scenic and less ideal but the decision really did save the day involve the family of course uh, if you have kids or she has kids involve them 
Women are usually very, very big on family, so make sure it's not just a you thing or a you and her thing. Get her friends involved. Get the family involved. Bring her mom out. Do whatever you can to take her whole world and put a little bit of boating into it. It'll just make it that much more meaningful. And don't expect the world out of your spouse. Uh, if they won't go full-time cruising and sell everything and do something crazy, do some shorter trips, weekend or week-long stuff. If you can find somewhere near you, let's say within 200 nautical miles of where your boat is moored, that's three days there and three days back. Take two weeks off work, the two of you, and go and do it. Go three days there, three days back. That gives you at least a week to hang out in this cool spot with your boat. And last thing, man, I keep saying romance. Make it romantic. It's easy to do. It doesn't take much. It's not expensive. Um, it's very easy for you to want to do what you want to do with the boat all the time. You want to go sailing or you want to go fishing or whatever it is. You bring your buddies out and have beers, booze cruising. Um, set a day aside. I mean, the boat should be fun for you. But set a day aside to make a romantic boating day, a romantic boating evening. Don't be afraid to cover the cockpit with rose petals. Bring champagne. Make it cheesy. Make her fall in love with boats like you are. That's it for this week, guys. I will see you on Friday. Please uh, hit the like button if you like the video. Hit subscribe if you want to see more. If you don't subscribe, you'll hurt my feelings a little bit. I love you guys. See you in a week.